All right, so today we're going to be presenting an analysis on the company AutoZone. My name is Angela. I'm Jacob. My name is Gavin. I'm Anna. All right, and getting right into it here with the history, some important dates to remember. Starting off with July 4th, 1979. This is going to be when the first AutoZone opened. It actually opened under the name AutoShack, which changed to AutoZone in the year 1987. In 1981, the first large-scale warehouse became available for customers to purchase parts that were not easily accessible. In 1986, AutoZone debuted its parts line under the name Duralast. In 1991, the company went public on the New York Stock Exchange. And in 1995, they debuted their Duralast Gold part line which consisted of limited batteries and alternators. And in 2003, Duralast branded tools became available, which gave customers the ability to purchase the parts and tools for the job all in one place. Something that may not be commonly known about AutoZone is its strong partnership with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, this partnership started in 2006, and as of 2021, AutoZone raised more than $51 million of support for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Mission and vision statement. AutoZone names their employees AutoZoners, and AutoZoners should provide honest advice and recommendations on AutoZone's extensive product line, whether it be what part or tool needed for the job. And AutoZone welcomes each individual's heritage, differences, and qualities. AutoZone strives for its employees to put forth an, ex an exceptional performance that puts customers first. AutoZone's product offerings allow customers to affordably repair their vehicles. Next, we have our pestle analysis. First, we have political. Changing legislation to increase demand for electric vehicles lowers the demand for traditional automotive parts. And Rhode Island is set to incrementally increase its minimum wage to $15 an hour by the year 2025. The Inflation Reduction Act that was signed off by President Joe Biden extends the tax credit of $7,500 for electric vehicle purchases and eliminates a regulation under the old credit that cut out incentives for automak automakers when they sell 200,000 electric vehicles. COVID-19 has shown how dependent the world is on China in the supply and demand chain. With the disruption of the chain due to COVID, AutoZone is forced to branch out to other, country, other countries for supply. And for economic issues, we have weakening exchange rates in countries outside the U.S. that AutoZone operates in harms revenue growth. And AutoZone employment levels have been steadily increasing over the past 10 years, showing a positive sign for growth. To the effects of COVID-19 on employment and income, people are using old cars involving more maintenance and demand for new cars reduces. Rising gas prices have caused inflation throughout America, especially with the transportation of products. Social issues, we have changing leisure preferences resulting in lower demand for recreational products. And AutoZone has a few locations in Puerto Rico where the majority of the population speaks Spanish. And this can this can be seen as a negative for the candidates for the in, in the hiring process for the candidates. They don't speak the native language. AutoZone released a program during COVID called Green Circle Life that helped employees manage protocols during a pandemic. This program continues now and is a key program for their HR department and training employees properly. Production of more efficient cars results in more miles driven and requires maintenance more frequently, increasing demand for auto parts. Next, we will look at the technological aspect. Technological advances of AutoZone's competitors. And AutoZone provides a very user-friendly website that includes videos on how to install the products itself. Auto parts are lasting longer and cars are requiring less maintenance due to technological advancements in the automotive industry. AutoZone can use social media more as a platform, for example, TikTok, because it has a lower fee for advertising. And for environmental issues, social, social attitudes surrounding the reduction of emissions will lower demand. 
and Amazon always encourages its customers to recycle used motor oil with them for free. How they dispose of their waste and hazardous waste items in an improper way. Supreme Court ruling recently can reduce the power of the Environmental Protection Agency on regulating the emission of greenhouse gases, which will result in higher emission and also challenge previous acts such as the Clean Air Act. And finally, the legal aspect. Antitrust laws for auto parts makers may limit growth and expansion. And the state of Texas uh, offers no corporate income tax. This can be very appealing for AutoZone or expansion. Vehicle manufacturers push restrictions on access to repair information, telematics, and diagnostic tools. Companies such as Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft have an opportunity on certain sectors of the economy, such as grocery, retail, and healthcare. And next, we'll be discussing sustainability. AutoZone has a strong focus on re recycling. They are committed to recycling the typical materials that all companies use, such as plastics, cardboard, and wood pellets in order to reduce the environmental footprint that comes with the day-to-day -day operations of a company. And they also recycle products specific to the automotive industry, such as motor oil, car batteries, steel, and worn out car parts. This helps to reduce the already massive environmental burden that the automotive industry has on the environment. They are able to help reduce each of the individual's footprint through incentives such as free oil recycling and buying back old batteries. Next, we have an ethical violation that AutoZone has encountered, which was in relation to its point system for attendance. And each time an employee is absent from work, they receive a point. And too many points can result in the employee being terminated. The issue with the system is when AutoZone failed to make reasonable exceptions for employees with disabilities. Under Title I, the Americans with Disabilities Act, AutoZone must make reasonable exceptions to people with legitimate disabilities. The company not adhering to this policy has resulted in the EEOC, Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, filing multiple lawsuits against them. This is a particularly pressing issue since AutoZone claims to be an inclusive employer. Now we have the strategic plans of AutoZone. A key strategic plan of AutoZone is to aggressively add more hub and mega hub stores. The, purchase, the purpose of these hubs is to aid in inventory fulfillment. And AutoZone CFO Jameer Jackson said that on the company's Q4 earning re earnings report, that they plan to add 20 more mega hub stores to its distribution network within the next 12 months. Currently, AutoZone has 58 mega hubs, but their goal is eventually to have over 100. Jackson said our mega hub strategy has given us tremendous momentum and we are doubling down. The, the purpose of these mega hubs is to help fulfill orders for customers within 24 hours. This ensures AutoZone has sufficient inventory and efficient logistics processes to maximize sales. In the current business environment post COVID, which has been dominated by supply chain issues, the investment is particularly important. This will improve customer satisfaction through quick delivery times, hence more returning customers and better brand reputation. Now, competitive analysis of AutoZone. Uh, AutoZone is part of the automotive repair industry, specializing in automotive replacement parts and accessories. AutoZone's main competitors are O'Reilly Auto Parts, Genuine Parts Company, and Advanced Auto Parts. And AutoZone is the second largest company out of its competitors, ranking behind O'Reilly Auto Parts. And the graph here shows a strong growth of AutoZone and O'Reilly far outpacing their other competitors. AutoZone currently has a market cap of $44 billion, whereas O'Reilly has a market cap of $46 billion. The automotive parts industry is a mature industry with overall revenue of $62.2 billion in 2022. The industry expects moderate growth of 2.1% in 2022. AutoZone individually is forecast to grow its revenue by 5.8% in the current year, beating the industry average. In the past five years, AutoZone has averaged 23.9% revenue growth per annum, and the forecast for revenue growth in the coming five years is 15.1%, highlighting how our company is maturing with the industry. And now we'll discuss the five forces model. Starting off with industry rivalry. rivalry. 
Uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts is a major competitor of AutoZone with 5,873 stores worldwide in uh, 47, 47 different states. Rock Auto and Amazon emphasize their low cost on retail items, which puts pressure on AutoZone to lower their prices. HP Delco is seen as AutoZone's biggest competitor when it comes to General Motor Parts with $228 million in revenue. Competitors of AutoZone are now beginning to collaborate with each other to increase their market share. And with the threat of new entrants, uh, Amazon is a well-established e-commerce company, and they are fully capable of creating their own parts division for auto parts. And this would take a large part of the business away from AutoZone. Walmart has now expanded its stores with an automotive section that has been slowly getting larger over the years. With them adding an online department for auto sales, they have grown into an actual competitor. New entrants bring innovative ideas for their products and better adjustments made to their business strategies. Other competitors bring new value propositions and enticing offers that may draw consumers away from AutoZone. And for the threat of substitutes, O'Reilly's products and services are virtually identical with AutoZone's. Uh, the only thing that, that might be different is the, you know, the branding or the pricing of the products. AC Delco has a main focus on general motor sales, and with COVID being practically over, the non-commercial business is re-emerging, losing the biggest car manufacturer part sales could be drastic to the company. The quality of customer service with the products in the automotive industry builds strong customer relationships and brings up customer lo loyalty. And Pep Boys offer both repair services and auto part replacements for an affordable price. And for supplier power, the vast majority of products offered by AutoZone are produced by them under the Duralast brand. AutoZone purchases from a diverse group of suppliers that charge a higher price overall. AutoZone can experiment with different types of material so that a price, if price of one material goes up, they can look into another option. And AutoZone can leverage its business to vendors who rely on the company, therefore reducing their bargaining power. And for buyer power, AutoZone has been rated America's number one automotive battery destination for years. Consumers are pulling away from DIY projects and leaning more towards online shopping at sites such as Amazon. If they build a large enough customer base, this will allow them to control the bargaining price. If they have a small customer base, it will be the customers having control of the bargaining price and discounts. AutoZone is building a rewards program as customers look for discounts and offers. Now getting into the SWOT analysis here, starting off with strengths. One strength of AutoZone is their revenue growth uh, because their revenue has increased year over year for the past 10 years. Another strength would be its retail distribution. AutoZone has 10 distribution warehouses located across the U.S. with plans of build, building new ones um, in new locations. Um, another strength would be its public image with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. AutoZone has raised over $51 million for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Also, they have a wide range of re replacement auto parts. AutoZone offers thousands of car parts, products, accessories, and tools. And as for the weaknesses, one weakness is going to be their reliance on the U.S. This is because the majority of their stores are based in the U.S. Another weakness would be free oil recycling, and this adds to their production costs and creates more waste. Employee product knowledge. AutoZone offers thousands of products, and AutoZone employees are only required to know a certain amount. And also free battery recycling, charging, and testing, shipping the batteries out, storing them, and the equipment to charge them as the operating costs. And for opportunities, uh, one opportunity is the, to increase their global marketing because they've yet to reach European or Asian markets. Another opportunity would be the rising EV market. This gives them a chance to offer more parts and accessories to fit electric vehicles. Um, increased in their specialized services, such as um, maintenance and repairs, provided at a faster rate. And also, a rising electric vehicle market means that they could begin recycling EV batteries, a largely untapped market. And starting off with threats, uh, one threat would be the electric vehicle growth. 
That's because electric vehicles are made much simpler than uh, internal combustion vehicles offering less parts. Another threat would be e-commerce businesses. This would cause customers to shop at online businesses with delivery services versus at AutoZone's own stores. Uh, competitions such as O'Reilly's Advanced Auto Parts, the Pet Boys, and Automotive Retail Industry who sell similar products would affect their sales. And recalls from suppliers could lead to a decrease in revenue. So looking into the AutoZone's innovation, one of the first automotive companies to focus on being customer oriented instead of focused on selling auto parts. This company has made this customer oriented service a core component of the business. AutoZone incorporated this approach in their daily operations and the way they approach their customers. They created more efficient inventory management systems that would be less time consuming when searching for products and keeps better track of the company's inventory. These inventory systems are electronic catalogs and linking stores to headquarters by satellite. And they also implemented the everyday low prices policy, which consisted of low affordable prices on all of their auto parts within their stores. They also offer lifetime warranties on private labels and branded parts. Looking into globalization, they have expanded their business by opening stores in Mexico and Brazil. There are about 6,051 stores in 50 states in the United States and 664 stores in Mexico and 52 stores in Brazil. They have created commercial sales programs and implemented this program in all their stores, including those in Mexico and Brazil. And they've also set environmental goals for the company and working to become more sustainable. They're also hoping to expand their customer base by forming more sustainable practices. The two environmental goals that they are setting are reducing carbon emissions and energy-related emissions. For energy-related emissions, they're hoping to decrease it by 15% within the year 2025 from a 2019 baseline. Some recommendations for AutoZone for the future. Expanding more globally into places such as Mexico and Brazil, as they have such little stores there right now. AutoZone could look to expand into the EV market more. And offering more amenities, such as uh, on-site repair service. They can also update online business sites to make it more appealing for customers. And in conclusion, AutoZone being an auto parts market it is going to face a lot of challenges with the new success of electric vehicles, Political, involving manu political issues involving manufacturing and the emergence of COVID, there has been a ripple effect throughout the market. This company runs a profitable company that puts a focus on its employees and the experience of the customers. With its mission to provide knowledge and experience to every customer, it's no surprise AutoZone has flourished in its market regardless.